All right, a couple more coaching malpractice examples before we move on and talking about our favorite spots in Ann Arbor. So, Brandon Staley, coach of the San Diego Chargers. It is the last two minutes of the game. I want to say it was a minute 54 left, okay? They are up four with the ball on their own 24. It's fourth and one. Minnesota Vikings are on the other side. He goes for it on fourth and one from his own 24. His rationale for doing so was, well, you know, they need at least a touchdown to win. What are we talking about? <laughs> okay, so you're going to put him closer <laughs> to the end zone if you don't get it, as opposed to punting the football and making hey. them drive 70 yards. You're going to risk it by going for it on fourth and one in your own your own 24, and he doesn't get it. The only thing that saves him is Kirk Cousins is Kirk Cousins. Obviously. And he throws a pick for the game, but it does not excuse the decision, DG. I mean, the guy was playing the game or coaching the game like he was playing Madden. But, like, if you – but it's so weird he was playing like he's playing Madden because I, I would do i go for it. But – oh, Madden, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, for me, is he's a defensive guy, right? And as a defensive guy, you know – how difficult it is on your defense when your offense doesn't get it in that situation, right? It, you, when you're closer, it's just it's just easier, right? I mean, it's not like – it's not rocket science or nothing like that. And so for him to make that decision as if you got like Peyton Manning or like Tom Brady on the other side, like, hey, he going to drive it anyway. We might as well try to keep him off the field right here. That's wild to me. And, and there was a lot of people saying even though they won, he should have got fired. Because he obviously can't handle it. They need to go ahead and elevate, elevate, uh, uh what's the coordinator's name? It came from the Cowboys. It, it, go ahead, elevate him to head coach because this man is out of his mind. They should be, they should still have no wins on the season. But like you said, Kirk Cousins did what he does in, in those spots. But my goodness, man, that I, I love, even in Madden, I'm going to think a couple times, like, ah, I don't know, man. I know I, it's just a video game, but I kind of don't want to lose. I want to see if, you know, if he could drive and put some plays together. But I, that was – now practice is Kellen great. Moore. Don't you think they kind of maybe hired Kellen Moore with the idea being, you know what, if it doesn't work out with Brandon Staley, guess what? We got your replacement right Young here. offensive mind is where the NFL is going as far as these head coaches are going. Because the thing is, these young guys that are offensive minds, they got a lot of pride about their offense, right? But they don't have any pride in defense, right? And so what I mean by that, there's no ego. So they're fine with hiring a guy and finding a guy that's a dude. Like, you take care of that. I don't want no parts of it. You do what you do on that side. You are the head coach of the defense as far as I'm concerned. You don't got to – don't worry about me. And 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 I think that, that that ability to take your ego out and not have to be the man in every part of the team – is something that is very attractive, and that's why these young offensive head coaches. I'm just telling you, McDaniel's at, in, in Miami. He ain't messing with the defense. Do y'all thing. Do what y'all gonna do. But we gonna handle ours on offense, and then make the big decisions. And and I think that that's what the league is going to. And if 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 this guy makes another decision such as the one he's made this week, he will not be the head coach of the Chargers any longer. It's, did you see the quote that that Ben just put up? He just put a quote from Brandon saying, this is the problem, Daniel. There's no one to pull him to the side. Just like I said with Marcus, Fre Marcus Freeman, there's no one to pull him to the side and be like, hey, look, you're messing up here, coach. We got to we gotta take it on the chin and say we just messed up. It, when you win the game and in hindsight, you should say, man, that was not a good call. Right. You should be like, man, that was a bad call on my part. We should not have done that. We shouldn't have done it. And we're lucky to get away with this one. But then when you go in because you got lucky and justify it, you are very not – you're not self-aware, so you got to go. You got to go. Gotta so go. he can go out of there. Uh, all right, so I'll throw this one at you, Daniel. I'm going to throw another uh, example because, DG, let's get it right. Mike McDaniel said, don't put an S on the end of my name. Uh, I'm No, McDaniel, not McDaniels because McDaniels is over there in, in Vegas. See that that's the dude who has no business. Put that my name. Don't put that son into my name. No, nah, man. Don't mix this up. Because that dude shouldn't be coaching. And the first thing he did was he drafted Tim Tebow and called him the quarterback of the future with the Denver Broncos. That should disqualify you from ever being a head coach in the National man. Football League again. 
That's number one. But now you got another job, right? You were able to parlay having Tom Brady as your quarterback mm-hmm. and and uh, Bill Belichick as your head coach. You were able to parlay that into another opportunity. So here you have it, right? And you got your guy, Jimmy G, got at your your quarterback. Guy. You got Devontae Adams at receiver. You got weapons. You got every, You got all the pieces that could, should make you competent as a coach. So right now. You're in a game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here's the scenario, Daniel. I want, I want you to follow me along. You got the ball. You are down eight points. There are two minutes and 22 seconds left on the clock. It is fourth down. Now, again, you're on the eight-yard line. You know, yeah. going, I mean, you're eight yards from the end zone, yeah. and you're down eight. What do you do in that situation? What would you do? You got to go for it. All right. That's not what Josh McDaniels did. It's Josh field McDaniels goal. <laughs> kicked the field goal. Down eight with two minutes, 22 seconds left and at the eight-yard line. And his rationale for making that decision was, well, we were going to need multiple possessions anyway. Fire. So one touchdown to tie the game. Touchdown, two-point conversion, you tie the game. You got to get fired. You got to so, get fired, man. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut his, his wing, man. His DG or his Daniel or whoever is supposed to tell, I'm gonna cut them some slack. But you shouldn't have to tell your head coach how to count. He should know how to. I mean, okay, we had to tell Marcus Freeman how to count to eleven. No, this, so this is different. This he, different. The is up there. That's a, that's the head coach's only job, right? That's your job for show to know the score and make sure you know what you got to do. Come on, man. Whoa. You don't know you can score eight points in one possession. You don't know that as a head coach in the National Football League. How do you have a job, Daniel Horton? You have that that Bill Belichick stamp. You it, it goes a long way in the NFL, That's wild. right? <laughs> That's wild. Because <laughs> he's he, like like you said, he's had a number of chances. He's always tried to prove that he's the smartest guy in the room. Oh, I'm mm-hmm. going to draft Tim. I'm going to draft Tim Tebow when nobody else has this valuation, this evaluation of Tim Tebow, but you. You know, do you come out? Oh, I'm going to kick a field goal instead of going for instead of uh, going for it on fourth down and getting a touchdown and a two point conversion. I'm going to kick a field goal because we're going to. I have this immaculate plan that's going to play out in two minutes and twenty seconds in NFL football game, where the other team obviously we have we played okay defense, but they're capable of getting the first down in the game, right? So it was it's like being my dad is a Raiders fan, so I got to call after the game immediately. <laughs> <laughs> like Josh, he's been saying Josh McDaniel should 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 have never been the Raiders coach from the beginning, and he's starting to look right because that was a bit ridiculous. <laughs> that was yeah, ridiculous. How do you keep a job after that? Coaching after malpractice. You don't know how many possessions it takes to get eight points as a coach in the National right. Football League. I just hey, want to know, know what the plan in his head was. Whatever he thought was going to happen, hey, we're going to kick this field goal. And then we're gonna kick it to him, not onside kick it. We're gonna—I know they had a couple of timeouts left. We're gonna kick it to him. I'm like, okay, like that's what? What did you think? We get a stop, they kick it back to us. Now we have to very little time to drive down and get it. We still have to score a touchdown, right? Even after right. the field, we still have to get in the end zone, <laughs> right? So it's like, what right? You, what do you think uh, was gonna happen? <laughs> oh my good, uh, man. I mean, so I'm sitting here trying to think of like what scenario. Like, I'm trying to help him. I'm trying to get an excuse for him. Don't do that. And there's nothing that, like, I can't think of nothing. Because even if you don't get it, right, even if you don't convert and make it, you still got a better chance. Right? I think you still got a better chance if you get the three and out you thought you was going to get when you kicked yes. the, kick the field. You still got a better chance. Yes. Three is never the option. <laughs> That's wild. That's malpractice. You don't get it. You got them pinned inside the 10-yard line, right? That's what I'm using. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? So, hey, but the media. The, so the media asking about asking them about it, you know, and one of them was like, "Man, who who gonna tell him? Who gonna tell him you could you could, like you only need one possession?" <laughs> so I was saying that like, "Hey, did you ever think that you could get eight at once in football?" Oh, I don't know. That's and you have Devontae Adams, right? Like you're this offensive. Hey, so we we was questioning anymore. Freeman's intelligence. This he uh, this is he a repeat offender, uh, McDaniel's. Yeah. He repeat offender. I don't think he that smart. He can't be. <laughs> That's why. You know what I'm they got you. Sometimes you so smart, you dumb. Ah, so smart <laughs> that you stupid. You so smart, you dumb. <laughs> why are you so smart? You outsmart everybody, including yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. 
So last one for you guys. Yeah, and they lost by, of course, they lost by five, right? Lost by five. Of course. Of course. Last one for you. So you guys were star players on your respective teams, right? I mean, and you went through struggles at one time. I'm, I'm, maybe you were on the receiving end of a of a blowout. You know, there's something to be said for continuing to 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 play and to be with the team, but because you need maybe you just need reps. Maybe you need more reps in certain situations. But your coaches have respect for you. Uh, they might might have wanted to preserve your health too. B- both things in a blowout. Like I don't want to get my guy hurt. I don't want to show him more respect than embarrassing him being on the court at the end of a blowout. Oh, uh, here we go. I know where this is. So going. I give you Sean Payton. Denver Broncos head coach. They are losing 70 to 20. All right. They are down 50 points with six minutes to go in the game. And you have Russell Wilson on the field. If there is not, I I don't know of any bigger sign that this is not his guy than that. I don't know how you could justify if you think there's a chance of him being your guy how you could justify having them on the field in that situation. That is, that's to me a question. Hey man, sucks to be you. That's how I took it watching that unfold. It certainly wasn't how you would think a a Super Bowl winning quarterback, maybe a hall of fame, probably a hall of famer is going to get treated, especially when there's supposed to be some juice left in the tank. Seems to me that Sean Payton is saying it's on empty. Uh, that's that was one of the more disrespectful things I've ever seen, and, and ever. It, to especially to a guy. Now I can see you. Maybe you got a young. Even for young guys, they take the young guys out. Like yeah, it's over. You know what I mean? Way way before they down fifty, right? With six minutes to go. But for to have a veteran quarterback that's had some injury, right? You've had some injury. Uh, you you still trying to get back to form to leave him out there. With that, with, with down 50, like, first of all, he could get hurt, right? Because you got a lot of guys on the other side that's just trying to make plays, right? They in there running around crazy, trying to do stuff, right? It's like hooping with some dudes that can't hoop. You're going to get hurt. You better not – don't do it. You, you can't hoop with scrubs because you're going to get hurt, okay? You're going to get hurt. All right, so you're out there with, with – not saying they scrubs, but guys that are just trying to make a stamp on the game at the end. Like, they, you're like I want to join the party too. Shoot, we up 50, let's get it popping. Right, you got an offensive line that's tired. Will like they like, man. I'm not trying to deal with these young dudes trying to come after us or whatever, whatever. You got you down fifty. I'm gonna keep saying down fifty because that's wild. Down fifty, right? And obviously, there's no president because people don't just get down fifty in the NFL. But you got all those things. Not to mention you've won a Super Bowl. You respected in the community. We don't know how respect you all on the team, right? It seems like you gained some of the respect back or whatever, right? But you would expect that your head coach would have some respect for you. Mm-hmm. Like some respect for what you've done, right? Because, you know, that's how the NFL works, right? It's kind of the good old boys club. You do work. You do good stuff. We respect you as such, right? Some respect to say, hey, man, you won a Super Bowl. You've done a lot in this league. You are a possible Hall of Famer, right? You could be a Hall of Famer. Ain't no way I'm going to do you like that just because I respect you as a man, just as a as a guy that's a pillar in this game. I am not going to leave you out there. Wrong. Wrong. I am going to leave you out there. Because I don't care nothing about that. that. <laughs> I mean, how would you say? Wouldn't that be the message that you Man, that you took, Daniel? No. I mean, if your coach did that to you, leave it. You, yeah. You're you getting beat by, what's the basketball? I mean, I guess the basketball equivalent is you're getting beat by 50 <laughs> points, and your coach has you out there playing against the third string. Come on, man. At that point, you have to. As a player, you got to continue to play hard because, like Devin said, you could get hurt. You know what I mean? So you have to continue to play hard and stay focused. But in the back of your mind, you're, like, you're looking over there like, hey, coach. Uh, you have to see me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, hey, coach, you know, this is the universal signal in basketball to come out to get to grab me a jersey. Hey, coach. But if you don't it's, – it's, it's one of those things like you – like I, I just think about it like this. He would have never left Drew Brees out there. Never. Right. You know what I mean? He would never do that to Drew Brees. So to see him do that to Russell Wilson is definitely a lack of respect and a lack of appreciation, respect for Russell Wilson's position and station within the NFL. Like as Devin stated, that man is probably a future Hall of Famer. So I would like, and, and then again, he's just starting quarterback making a gazillion bucks. Why do you? Why do you want him? Exactly. Out there? 
That makes no sense. So yeah. now Sean, Sean Payton is looking a little past the plot right now. So we, we'll but Daniel, are we surprised though? Because Sean Payton been making it clear. I do not rock with Russell Wilson. I don't like that he had an office. I don't like that he always kissing back. I don't like that he's so quarterback heel. I want a dude that's just a dude. But it really makes me think. Why you? Why do you have such a problem with him being such a good dude? Because from what I can see, Drew Brees was a solid dude. Now he might have some fire in the game and all that. But as far as father, you know, husband, all these things, kissing babies, right, taking you know a hold of of New Orleans, all that same. Right? He's so like Russell like, Wilson, another Russell Wilson. Right? Yeah, it was <laughs> Russell Wilson. It was Russell Wilson esque, if you will, and so. Yeah. I don't understand how you have such a – well, maybe off the field, Drew Brees is a little more of a dude, right, go get drinks with him and all that, because I'm sure Russell Wilson ain't going to get drinks and all that. I'm sure he's not – you know, he's really out front about his faith. I'm sure he's not getting drunk, all that stuff. And so maybe Sean Payton, like, I can't rock with him because uh, I can't be cool with him, kind of like how the owners can't pick a head coach that's black because I don't – I can't really mesh with him, him, right? Man. And so I think that's a lot of what's in play here as well, and, and I don't think it's fair at all. I don't think it's fair at all, and, and, and it seems fairly arrogant because you know you got your position, right? They paid me all this money to come coach, come back and coach. I'm not going nowhere, so I can say what I want. I can do what I want, but he looking kind of crazy because you talked about how bad the coaching job was a year ago. He ain't get beat by 50. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 Hey, man, oh, you don't give up yeah. 70 points and it's all on the players. It can't be. No, nah, heck you know. No, nah, with, with Sean Payton, though, he's just going back to his days in New Orleans with me being a, a Saints fan. He's really hard on his play. I know I know most coaches in the NFL, all right, but he's like – he's one of those coaches to another level where if you're not performing, whether it be whoever, he will, he'll sit, he'll take a starter and sit him down. I don't think he'll do that to Russell. Well, No, you know, he'll leave him out there. Yeah, he'll leave him out there, right? <laughs> but, you know, like everybody else, offensive linemen, defense, you underperform under Sean Payton, he's, he, he won't hesitate to get you out of there. So he's really – He's really tough in that way, and and it's it's a bit it's a bit abnormal because as a Saints fan, he's got rid of guys that were like, why'd you get rid of him? And the other guys, he's kept like what? So now you just look at the Saints draft record, and you tell me <laughs> if you can, you know, you'll see what I'm what I'm talking. He about. loves him the Swiss Army knife. What's the one dude for New Orleans? <laughs> he really him. don't contribute <laughs> for real, but he just like him. I like him. He's hard well, he, nose. He was taking Drew Brees out the game to put Taysom Hill at quarterback. He like, loved him from Taysom. He's probably trying to work it out where he can get Taysom Hill in the building. He <laughs> probably <laughs> would. <laughs> He'll probably yeah, he loves Taysom Hill, and I just don't see it. 